In this video, we are going to learn photochemical reactions of H2Cl2 and H2Br2. In the previous video, we have learned what quantum yield or quantum efficiency is. And also we have seen photochemical reactions takes place in two stages, primary process and secondary process. We also learned the reactions in which secondary process takes place in the form of a chain will have high quantum yield. So we have seen the example photochemical reaction H2 and Cl2 which have high quantum yield that is phi greater than 1. So in this video we will be learning this in detail. So what happens when H2 and Cl2 react or combine with one another in the presence of light? They produce two molecules of HCl. Look at the reaction hydrogen plus chlorine in the presence of light that is in the presence of HNU forms two molecules of HCl. This is the first sentence that you should write under photochemical reaction of H2 and Cl2. So you all know that the quantum yield of this reaction is very high. It's 4 to 10 power 6. This is a very high value. We also know that high quantum yield of this reaction is because of the secondary process taking place in the form of a chain reaction. Look at the mechanism of this reaction. First step, as you all know, it is the primary process. What happens in primary process? Each reactant molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation and dissociates into two free radicals. Here, chlorine molecule absorbs one quantum of light radiation and dissociates into highly energetic chlorine free radicals that we can also name it as chain initiation. Next step is the secondary process. What happens here? Chlorine free radical reacts with hydrogen molecule forming HCl and giving rise to hydrogen free radical. So this is secondary process and you can also name it as chain propagation. This hydrogen free radical involves in another secondary process and gives rise to furthermore free radicals. So that can also be named as chain propagation. Fourth step is recombination of chlorine free radicals forming chlorine molecule that is called as chain termination. Step one is the primary process in which chlorine molecule absorbs one quantum of light radiation and dissociates into two chlorine free radicals. This step strictly follows Einstein's law, that is second law of photochemistry. Step two, the highly energetic chlorine free radical produced in the first step reacts with H2 molecule producing highly energetic hydrogen free radical. This is an exothermic process and takes place spontaneously. Step 3, hydrogen free radical produced in step 2 reacts with another chlorine molecule and produce HCl and chlorine free radical. Here you can observe that second and third steps takes place one after another in the form of a chain reaction involving all hydrogen and chlorine molecules absorbing only one quantum of light. Next step four, the chain reaction is terminated by the combination of two chlorine free radicals converting into chlorine molecule. If you observe, the number of molecules will be more than the number of quanta of light absorbed. So using the expression for quantum yield that is phi is equal to number of reactant molecules by number of quanta of light absorbed, the phi value will be more than 1. Hence, we say that 
high quantum yield of this reaction is due to the secondary process taking place in the form of a chain reaction. Also, we can quote few other factors. Chlorine free radicals have high electronegativity. Their reactivity is high and their size is very small because of which less amount of energy is consumed and hence quantum yield of this reaction is greater than 1. Next is photochemical reaction of H2Br2. The quantum yield of this reaction is very low that is 0 0.01. So, what is the mechanism of this reaction? First step is the primary process and in this primary process, bromine molecule should absorb one quantum of light and produce two bromine free radicals. And in secondary process, the bromine free radicals produced in the primary process should form HBr and H free radical and this should continue in another secondary process but the chances for secondary process are very low why because these bromine free radicals might recombine or sometimes the energy absorbed from light might be insufficient or many other factors are responsible for the deactivation of bromine free radicals so what happens the number of molecules will be reduced and the number of quanta of light will be more in number so using these values in the expression of phi phi value will be less than one so when phi is less than one we say that the quantum yield is very very low experimentally it was observed the e quantum yield of this reaction is 0 0.01 and also other factors you can observe here large amount of energy is required than that required for the formation of HCl. Why? Because chlorine free radicals are smaller in size whereas bromine free radicals are large in size hence more amount of energy is required. So if the secondary process happens it happens with great difficulty consuming more and more energy. Also bromine free radicals are less electronegative. The reactivity is less and also they have large size. By all these factors quantum yield of this reaction will be very very low that is 0 0.01. So this is all about photochemical combination of H2 and Br2. Kindly note down all these points in your notebook and carefully you try to understand all the points in the next video upcoming video i will be explaining about consequences of light radiations that is jablonsky diagram which is a very very important question in this chapter photochemistry thank you